Hey, I didn't see you there. Well, while you're here, I just wanted to let you know that today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, tell us a little bit about Patreon. Uh, Patreon is where you can go if you'd like to support us. Uh, you can just send us a little bit of cash if you'd like to, of course, in return for uh, some perks, which are like things like commentaries, uh, just extra content. We, we just put extra content on there, lots of it. Yeah, right now in January, we're running our January over there, where we're posting <laughs> one thing related to Annie every single week of January, so... You're uh, Jan- January. 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 I, I hate my life, and I hate Annie, and it won't stop, Jess. Neither one of them will stop. Nope, Annie goes forever. But, Andrew, who's giving us money right now? Like, tell us, tell us their names. Oh, tell yeah, sure. Uh, we have Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Teskier, Colin McLeod, Fire of September, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Alice in Wonderland, Sean O'Neill, B-Way Flicks, uh, is that My- Michael? Michael Johan. Michael Johan, sorry. It's, uh, it's a new one. This one, this one actually is a little... <laughs> Nathaniel <laughs> Stacy Combe, 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 and Joseph Evans Green. You know, That's you guys a lot. have great. You guys have great names that I can't pronounce. I really appreciate that. And we thought Mina Maniri was hard. It still is. <laughs> <laughs> but these wonderful people give us a little financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks such as patron-only commentaries, our episodes a day earlier or even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. Andrew, are you ready to start this show? Absolutely. Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew to like musical theater more. How are you doing today, Andrew? You know, I've been I've been thinking, Jess. We we talk a lot about names here. We read through a whole list of names. We introduce ourselves with our names, but never once have we really asked, "What is your true name, Jess?" Well, we are supposed to have three names. If you of, well, of course. Recall. Call correctly. One is the one given to us, and they're normal names, so that is our Jesse and Andrew names, correct? Of course, yes. Yes, of course. Um, then we have our nonsense names, which, uh, Andrew, why don't you go first? What's your nonsense name? My nonsense name is Hey Doctor. I guess mine is XX, Jess World XX. <laughs> yes, so we do have our nonsense names. <laughs> what would be our songs to introduce ourselves? XXX, X, Jess World <laughs> XXX. X, X, X. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you get the you get the hustle and bustle song, Jess. No, no, <laughs> well, we all know what you'd get. You'd be Hey Doctor, the asshole cat. <laughs> 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 Oh. And then the third name, which apparently we just stare off into space thinking about. Yeah, I mean, that's a great one, but we never find out anybody's third name, so... No, no, no. But in case you guys hadn't picked up by our very subtle descriptions, this week, we're finally talking about cats. Patrons, we did a whole commentary on cats, but the we patrons thought that don't would be count as humans. They man, are angels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we never learned their true names. So, <laughs> but we, we thought that would be enough. We thought, oh yeah, we'll do the commentary on cats. No one's gonna actually care if we do a real episode. And then this 
fucking movie comes out. <laughs> and it was worse than our expectations, and we had very low expectations. My expectations were down in the fucking dumpster, and uh, somehow they dug a hole underneath the dumpster, and that's where they put the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but Cats is a sung-through musical composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber, of course, based on the 1939 poetry collection Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. It tells the story of a tribe of cats called the Jellicles, and the night they make the Jellicle choice, deciding which cat will ascend to the heavy side layer and come back to a new life. He the musical includes the well-known song Memory, as sung by Grizabella, as of 2019, Cat re Cats remains the fourth longest running Broadway show and the fourth longest running West End musical. Holy shit, Andrew. It's a, I mean, does it deserve its success? Um, <laughs> I, I know we'll go into it, but a short answer is no. And the, and long, the long answer, answer is also no. <laughs> it's no because. <laughs> <laughs> no, the long answer is fuck no. <laughs> So, Andrew, what yeah. do you think about Cats? Oh my god. What is there to say about Cats? So, the lyrics, and we talked about this in, uh... The commentary a bit. In the commentary, but you say the lyrics, they were unable to change anything at all from the book? Yes, that is the rumor. They weren't allowed to change anything from T.S. Eliot's poems. They weren't allowed to add. Yeah, well, it shows, because <laughs> it's... Awful. I'm trying to think of good lyrics in this, and I can't because they're all just bizarre, and <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this, Jess. Like, where do you even begin with cats? Uh, uh, um, uh, well, <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's talk about the plot. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that alone is insane. Okay, um, alright, well, we love to do the thing where I try to explain the plot, so I feel like I, we just do that, right? Yeah, you, you try <laughs> to do the plot, Andrew, I wish you luck. Okay, I will say, uh, the movie makes the plot, the plot a little bit more clear, or at least they create a plot for it, which the musical does uh, not. kind of doesn't. <laughs> the musical doesn't even have a lead character. No, no, the... If I remember correctly, uh, and I haven't uh, fully watched all the way through the musical since we did the commentary, I'll be honest with you, but if I remember wow, correctly... Wow, the... unprofessional. We deserve that one-star review that says we don't do research. One-star review for no research. That's fine. I can take that. <sighs> I'm still uh, mad about that. I'm still... You're st he's still mad about that. It's a I random work guy. I so Who cares? fucking hard on this show, dude. <laughs> Whatever. We have not missed a single week in 71 episodes. I'm fucking angry. <laughs> He's like, you do not fucking research. It's painful to listen to. Eat my asshole. Yeah, eat, eat our assholes. God, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. True. Okay, well, if I remember correctly, the character that is the lead in the movie literally has one dance number at the beginning and is gone forever after that in the musical? It, or I mean, they, like, become a background character or something like that? Like, I mean, it goes it goes about itself being a ensemble piece, so to say. So they don't want to have one lead character. Yes. Okay. Well, the plot, as far as I can tell... And I think this is accurate, is is just there is a Jellicle ball, which... Um, so far, so good, yes, yes, yes. All the Jellicle cats are going to go to, so the uh, lead cat can uh, pick the Jellicle choice. Old Deuteronomy can make the Je Jellicle choice, um, which is basically um, how I interpret it is a blood sacrifice to <laughs> their Jellicle god, uh, and the Jellicle choice is who they choose to murder that night. Do you think the Jellicle god is a cat god or a person god? It's a cat god. Christ, can you can you get anything right? It's cats. Come on, man. You're right, There's you're no right. I'm sorry. Please, please don't. Yeah. Well, the movie makes it <laughs> seem like there are. Okay, well, the movie can't figure out what the <laughs> scale of this world is. Sometimes they're the size of mice and sometimes they're the size of, like, ferrets. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they all, like, when you put them to scale on, like, there's this, uh, we're not talking about the movie, fuck that, no. Well, we are talking about the movie, not yet, though. Not yet, we, we're we not doing it right now. It's but, gonna be oh hard my, not to. So basically, the plot is a bunch of cats introduce themselves until someone says that they introduced themselves well enough for them to be allowed to die. Am I right? 
Uh, p- pretty much, yes. They have uh, to be and, allowed and, to die. <laughs> and there's like a mean cat who is trying to like cheat and become the Jellicle Joyce. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's only in the movie. But Cavity's just kind of a bad guy in the musical. Well, yeah, he's he kidnaps old Deuteronomy, if I remember right. No, he kills. skins him alive, remember? Yeah, and then wears the skin, right? <laughs> yeah, and then suddenly the magical Mr. Mistopheles brings him back to life. Well, all things considered, the magical Mr. Mistopheles should be the Jellicle Joyce. No, but he didn't sing memory, so... Yeah, he didn't sing about his mammary glands. Yeah, okay, well, I mean, the the real plot of the musical is they all sing a song until one of them sings an actually good song, and, and then, then that one gets to win. And there's a lot of cool <laughs> dancing. That That's me giving a monochrome of credit. Okay, yes, the praise for Cats, and all of the praise I have for Cats, is uh, the dancing is very good, and it's certainly an oddity to watch. Um, you're really not going to experience anything like it anywhere else, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Andrew, can I get mad for a second completely off track? I went to go find that review that said we didn't do research. Jess. <laughs> and you know what? Since the last time I checked, we got another review <laughs> that's two stars. <laughs> Jess, we're a two-star show. What can I say? Yeah, we're not what good. can we say? I can't even read the rest of it to see what proper critiques. They're from Great Britain, so it's not even appearing on American, like... <sighs> sorry, sorry for that derailment. Jess, you can't get mad about all of our reviews. We know that they're accurate because we are a two-star show and we don't put effort <laughs> into this. But don't they not understand <laughs> the humor of it is just your reaction to the insanity of musical theater? Jess, I'm a two-star person, okay? So if that's all the humor you've got, then it's two stars. God damn it. <laughs> you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, all right. Back to cats. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything about the actual stage musical that you really enjoy? Um, because I well, the can't dancing. S- I can't say it's not entertaining when it wants to be. <laughs> I think it should have been a little more bombastic, in my opinion. Um, if, if you had it your way, every song would be Scribble Shanks the Railway Cat. <laughs> honestly, yes, that's my favorite part of the whole show, uh, and I think that's actually like a genuinely fun thing, and it it's very good. And I know Memory is, like, the big song that, like, oh, everybody loves that one, but it's just... Someone applauded in my movie theater when it happened. Okay, is Memory just, like, a bad version of I Dreamed a Dream? Yes. I mean, (laughs) I consider I Dreamed a Dream a bad version of I Dreamed a Dream, but... I mean, sure, but Memory is a worse version of it, then. Mm, Yeah, Memory is a worse version of I Dreamed a Dream, yes. Um, in a worse show. (laughs) Yeah, with a worse character. But they do both die, so points there. Yeah, points there. I mean, they get it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to really have a connection to any of the characters because they just, I mean, they just introduce themselves. It's like, it's almost like a cliche to say that, oh, it's just a whole show where they all introduce themselves. But that's literally what it is. There, there's no exaggeration there. That's exactly what it is. But people love this show, Andrew. Like actual real life people. I don't know if that's true, Jess. No, it is. I There are thousands. Have you ever been on Tumblr? No, I pride myself in that fact, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> like, they adore this this show and the characters. They all relate to the character. Like, I'm totally Bumbel Urena, and you're totally Grizabella, and I am totally Rumpelteaser and Mungo Jerry. This is a real thing? Yes, people like this show. They're not just bizarre, like, Broadway furries, or... I mean, that's probably part of what they are, but... Jess, I stand by that no matter how bad something is, people will like it, but that doesn't mean everyone likes this show. That just means there's a few weirdos that like this show. I'd, well, once again, fourth longest running Broadway musical of all time, fourth longest West End musical of all time. It makes money. I don't know. I, I don't get it, Jess. I don't understand how people could like this. I don't want to believe that people like this show. People like the show and they're going to tell us, like, look at the comments for our cat's commentary video we put out. What are, what are the comments on that? I'd be curious as to what people said about I'm, that. I like how our cats episode is going to us just reading people yelling at us. I'm I'm fine with it, Jess. I don't even care. <laughs> we, we finally jumped the shark to, so far to a point that Andrew just doesn't care if we lose our viewership. Jess, we can't really talk that much about cats because there's no plot. And until we get to the movie, I don't know if, how much I have to say about this show. Okay. <laughs> 
first comment. First comment. Um, okay, I'm gonna be that one. guy. Do all you don't them. have to experience you. You have to experience the show live to understand why it's popular. When you see it in person, it's immersive. There's a physicality to it, and you just don't experience through a scene. I find it thrilling at times, and some of my favorite parts are the quieter numbers that feel very atmospheric. There's a lot of great stage imagery. I love the show. Totally guilt free. So I, I mean, I haven't seen it live, so I guess I can't argue. Maybe I have. Maybe... It, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I just don't see it. I feel like all the best parts of, of a musical are a lot of it is the plot. A lot of it is funny and clever lyrics. And this show has intentionally taken both of those elements out of their show. So I just don't get it. Can I give you one last example of people that like cats but hate what we say about cats? Yeah, sure. I'm fine. But... Someone commented on our video and her name or his name is Demeter Rumpelteaser. And they said... I don't understand why they laughing, but no one tell you that you need to like it, and no one tell you, though, say this about cats. Because I don't say you need to like and understand, but it's like you say it's weird and you say all these things, but some people like it. And when you gonna hate on it and laugh because we can do the same thing about your videos, so you know what I mean. Laughing emoji. But I just want to say some people search cats on YouTube and they find this, just like you two gonna hate on Tugger and say no one care about it. Well, I want to say that's not true, but other people who don't like cats are like, okay, I don't understand why you're comment this, but sure. So that's what I want to say. Super random, but okay. And it wasn't funny what you said about Tugger because everyone knows that it's just a musical and 99% is laughing about Rum Tum Tugger, but it isn't funny. All right, well, I'm not going to make fun of a <laughs> child, so... <laughs> I did not see the replies to it, though, which are, what the fuck, I think I just had a fucking stroke, and what even? I mean, I feel like that had to be, like, a child that's, like, a fan of cats or something. Cause that, I mean... I don't want to, I don't want to mock a actual child. I'm not mocking child. anyone, but there are people that actually <laughs> like this show, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know, there's so many better shows, why would you... <laughs> <laughs> you guys know Phantom still exists if you want Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah, like, Phantom of the Opera is better. And I know we're, we kind of dump on, on that too, but it's, that's... I, I, I dump on it less than Jess does. Jess really hates that show I really don't like reason. that show. I made a 90-minute video about it, so why don't you go check that out? Yeah, well, I, I don't think it's as bad as he does, but uh, this is that bad. Cats is actually... I don't know. How would you well, fix we... cats? Like, if someone came to you and was like, you have to do a musical review about cats, like, and you have all those regulations, would you just not do it? <laughs> okay, well, if you have all the... if you, ha I mean, this is the best it could possibly be with, like, unable to change the lyrics, um, you know, can't add anything to it. Like, I mean, the I'm assuming Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats is just a bunch of names of a cat in a poem that follows so like, i mean how there's really no different cats is what it there's is. really no other way to do it i mean they did the best they possibly could <laughs> um want me to give you my hypothesis of why this was so successful sure all right so andrew lloyd weber has made a name for himself at this point this was post phantom post all wait no it was pre phantom it had to be pre phantom i'm pretty sure phantom was 1989 so this was jess are you trying to tell me you have not done your research on this episode i hate you so fucking much <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm pretty sure yeah this was before phantom so this is the guy that brought us avita jesus christ superstar he's become a superstar in his own right so he writes this new musical, puts it on West End, and it gets decent reviews because West End kind of likes these weird perverted shows that are kind of fun. Then it comes to the U.S. and they're like, how do we market this? We don't know. There's no main character. There's no famous people. What do we do? They're just going to put up these posters with those cat eyes, the black poster, nothing else all over the city. People are like, what is this? What? And they go to see it and their friends would be asking them, what was it about? What happened in it? It's just, uh, you got to see it for yourself. I can't explain. And so that was the word of mouth travel of cats. 
I, I want to be honest with you. I think that's 100% accurate because when uh when we initially were going to do cats and like when we were, you were like, oh, we're going to do a commentary on cats. And I was like, I, I had no idea what it was about at all. The only thing I knew about cats was that they dressed in these weird cat things that look kind of like weird and just not OK. <laughs> The cost, the costumes are not what I would have done, but I'm not really sure what I would have done. So yeah, but that's the only thing I knew about it. And then we watched it and you know, I sat through the whole thing. So there you go. <laughs> Was it everything you expected it to be is the question. I didn't know what to expect. So yes. Cause there is audio. <laughs> like this is kind of the best thing about this show is we kind of have an, a journalistic, um, a review of everything that you've asked and now we have answers to because I'm pretty sure you asked on podcast what is cats even about and I'm like I can't tell you I can't even explain okay I feel like we should talk about the music because I think the second half of this episode is just going to be the movie okay um <laughs> let's go into the music folks if you were and you are you're a What do you think of the Jellicle prologue, the Jellicle songs for Jellicle cats that goes on for 45 minutes? <laughs> At first, I kind of like it because it's kind of like it's kind of a fun song. And I feel like there's a lot of songs in this that are not very fun and are kind of boring. Uh, and this one's kind of got like a little beat to it and it's got a little fun stuff. But then it just keeps going and going and going and going. And uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it doesn't even set us up to the world very well. Like, which is most well, of what okay. it's trying to do. Just the name of the song, and we haven't talked about this yet, Jellicle Songs for Jellicle Cats. Uh, the the only adjective in there is uh, un unexplained. In the movie, they explain <laughs> it. At the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I like the dances. I like the costumes. I like the stage itself. It's pretty neat looking. I guess. I find the costumes a little unsettling, to uh, be honest. I mean... That's one thing if you're, like, actually recording it, like, in that 1998 recorded production. But if you're in the back row of the mezzanine, like, it, it's fine. I'm like, oh, they're cats. Look at them. Yeah, I, I suppose the, the less detail you get, the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the synthesizer, like, ba 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 da 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 It sounds really eerie, but... And any other form, it feels really dumb. Like, if you take that and put it into, like, a 2019 movie, it sounds terrible. So, good yeah, thing no one's ever done that. Good thing no one's ever done that. Uh, <laughs> but on stage, it kind of works. Yeah, although you better get used to that theme, because they're never going to stop. <laughs> I mean, Andrew Lloyd Webber, I, I remember when we did the commentary, you turned to me and was like, so, remember what you said about Andrew Lloyd Webber only writing five songs and then <laughs> repeating them a thousand times? Da 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 however it goes. But like Am I just over and over it never stops. Like in between every song they'll put that and like in the background of some of the songs they'll put that and like just yeah, okay, we get it. It's a theme. I mean you don't have to bring it back that many times. Oh god. The rota dog is a curious cat. If you offer me pheasant, I'd rather have grass. If you put me in a house, I would much prefer a flat. If you put me in a flat, then I only want a house. If you set me on a mouse, then I only want a rat. If you set me on a rat, then I'd rather chase a mouse. The rum tum tug is a curious cat. Do you want to talk about the rum tum tugger? Uh, Rum Tum Tugger is a is a curious cat. Um, he, I mean, he likes to fuck. I'm pretty sure that's his thing. He he could be called Buck, who likes to fuck. That's true. He likes to do that, and he also likes to be intentionally contrarian about what people think he's gonna do. Is that uh, am I right about uh, that? Did you know that Rum Tum Tugger has his own Wikipedia page? <laughs> I mean, I don't doubt it. I mean, he's a, he's, um, which means he's a I can learn cat. more about him. Rum Tum Tugger is a rebellious and unappeasable cat. 
He loves the limelight, while at the same time enjoys being seen as an individual by separating him from his tribe. A ladies' man, the female cats are in awe of him, and he flirts openly with almost every female cat, especially Bombalurina. Although Demeter seems to dislike him deeply, his older brother, the serious and responsible Monkestrap, often has to keep him in line. I did not know they were supposed to be siblings. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I kind of assumed they were all siblings. They're all jellical cats, right? I mean, I guess. Um, he's often portrayed as rock star esque, and Andrew Lloyd Webber has stated that the part of the character is intended to be an homage to Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Okay. In an attempt to modernize the show, Rum Tum Tugger was revamped into a street rapper in the 2014 West End revival, and it was so hated they just they just made it normal again. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber just desperately wishes he made Hamilton. Okay. Oh, he didn't, and he never will. I just think Andrew Lloyd Webber needs to just stop all this all this pretense and just make his heavy metal musical. <laughs> We know he wants to. I would actually be very interested in Andrew Lloyd Webber's heavy metal musical. <laughs> I think he'd do a good job with it, honestly. I, I don't think Andrew Lloyd Webber's done a good job with anything in the last 40 years. I think that's because he's desperately trying to not make a heavy metal show. <laughs> that's just and the one thing holding him back. He's like, he's no, like, it's getting too heavy metal. I can't do that. I don't want it to be too heavy for the people. <laughs> they, all, they all want the, the Beetlejuices. Yeah, but, like, come on. Fan of the opera, the best song in there is just a heavy metal song. We Like, come on. <laughs> Stop it. Um, do you want to talk about Skibble Shanks, the railway cat? Uh, you just skipped, like, a million cats. Yes, I do want to <laughs> talk about the railway cat. <laughs> you weren't arguing with it. <laughs> um, what do we really have to say about Gus the theater cat? Oh, my God, he used to be so great. Ugh. His name is Asparagus. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gods and all the porters and the station master's daughters would be searching high and low, saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? For unless he's very nimble, then the night mail just can't go. <laughs> Skimble Shanks, the railway cat, has the best number because it's the most fun and he tap dances. And uh, if I were one of the cats, I would be Skibble Shanks, the railway cat. But you remember in the stage show when he's like actually makes them into a train? I Yes. It's the there's greatest some, thing. There's a lot of weird stuff in the show altogether and honestly the railway cat part is great and and the railway cat just kind of comes out of nowhere too like just yes. like all the other cats but he just kind of appears specifically he's a little bit out of nowhere because you kind of feel like oh this is getting more serious like McCavity's coming yeah like there's actually kind of like a plot happening at this point and then yeah uh and then he's just like here i am <laughs> i'm the railway cat oh <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, like Wee! Right. <laughs> but you also feel like, hey, maybe the show's slowing down. Maybe, maybe the show's almost over. And then, nope. Yeah, Act Two, they kind of like that's where they start to like pretend that there is a plot. But yeah, I would almost prefer this if this was just a review, just like, hey, each one's about a different cat, and they all get their own little five minute number, and then the show's over. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like all the plot stuff is just like, it just slows the show down and you're like, oh. Yeah, if there was no plot, I think I'd enjoy this better. Because the plot stuff, the plot is so thin that all these scenes that are about the plot are like, just boring. It's like, yeah, I, there's nothing happening. I know that there's nothing happening. You don't have to explain all the nothing that's happening. <laughs> just, just, maybe we should just throw a cat in a bag and throw it in a river. Hell yeah. All right. And uh, do we want to talk about memory? Oh, you want to talk about Mr. Mistopheles? I want to talk Just... about the three M's. I want to talk about McCavity. You want to talk about Taylor Swift? <laughs> she did not invent that song. Don't... Stop <laughs> being a cat's revisionist. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. McCavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity. He's broken every human law. He breaks the law of gravity. Would make a 
take your stare. And when you reach the scene of crime, McCavity's not there. You may seek him in the basement. You may look up in the air. Uh, McCavity is such a fun number. It's like the one McCavity, sexy sounding McCavity. number. McCavity. It's fun. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of annoying. It's like a oh, playground taunt at God times. forbid, like, some of these co- these songs about cats be a little annoying. I, I mean, they mostly all are because a lot of them repeat the names. and I, it, It's fine. McCavity's fine. Taylor Swift did a bad job singing it, though. That's all I can say. It's a fine song, and it's fun. God, can't we have fun talking about a sexy, sexy, dirty cat? Look, the Railway Cat song is fun. McCavity is annoying. <laughs> Andrew just doesn't want to enjoy things. We have to talk about Memory. I feel like we have to. Yeah, Memory's a good song. If you get a really good singer to perform it, it's great. Yeah, honestly, it's, like, almost better as just a standalone, like, without the rest of Cats happening. Yes. Just, like, just listen to Memory and not think about Cats. And I feel like the story contained within the song is good enough by itself that it doesn't need any of the rest of it. So, just listen to that. Yeah, I mean, what... Can we do, like, a top ten best versions of memory and still enjoy it? Yeah. Like, go watch some of those videos. There's tons of them. Like, I like Betty Buckley and Elaine Pages. They're very good. But yeah. uh, anyone that can sing and sings a song probably does it all right. Yeah, I've done very good versions of it. I'm probably in the top three. Okay, okay. G- give us the final mo- moment. Give us the touch me. <coughs> meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I really get into character, so I start, like... <laughs> I'm crying. My my heart is touched because this character. The character of Grizabella, the gra- glamour cat. <laughs> the glamour cat! Andrew, is she called the glamour cat ironically, or did she actually used to be a really fabulous glamour cat? I'm pretty sure the whole point of memory is that she used to be a very fabulous glamour cat. Did you not watch this? Did you not do any research, Jess? God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) The worst part is that makes me have to leave the part where I'm bitching about our reviews in here. This is what... (laughs) (laughs) Guys, please leave us nice reviews. People on the internet are sometimes mean to me. (laughs) Two stars at the most. I want Jess to be upset at all times. It makes him work harder. It doesn't. (laughs) It, ma- it, it makes me put the gun in my mouth. That's fine. We all know he's too pussy to pull the trigger. No, I'm going to the any side layer. You can't stop me. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't stop me. The heavy side layer call. Jess, you are not the Jellicle choice. <laughs> <laughs> can, we get a, can we get a game show hosted by Old Deuteronomy called The Jellicle Choice? And welcome to the Jellicle Choice. The Jellicle Choice. (laughs) No, Tom Berteron hosted, of course. Come on down. (laughs) All right, we got Rum Tum Tugger. How? What are you doing for us today? I'm gonna do a dance. (laughs) All right, let's see how he does. Oh, that was great. Very good. But is it good enough to die? <laughs> Let's go into a mid show announcement. Oh boy. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shill at you. Um, today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, tell us a little bit about Patreon. All right, well, in a very special mid show announcement, I'm going to do 
a cat style number for every one of our patrons. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> no. Do it. Our, our current patrons are Stephanie L. Stephanie Terry Needleman. L is a curious cat. Our current patrons are Stephanie L. Terry Needleman. Terry Max. Needleman is a curious cat. You can't just do Rum Tum Tugger for all of them. If you did like Mr. Mistopheles, maybe I'd allow it, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rush through this one, Jess, okay? Uh, Max Lunick, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Tiskier, Colin McLeod, Fire September, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Alice in Wonderland, Sean O'Neill, B-Way Flicks, uh, Mikhail Johan, Nathaniel Stacy Coombe, and Joseph Evans Green. They give us a little financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us, and maybe they've given us a five-star review instead of a two- or a one-star review, um, please, please, you'll get tons of fun perks over at our Patreon. So, like, we got commentaries, our episodes a day early, and a bunch of other stuff. So come on to Patreon, folks. We love you. We love you. Let's get back to the show. You can even go on Patreon and watch our, our cast commentary if you yes, want. Yes, our cats and Terry. <laughs> But at least you have beautiful ghosts And so maybe my home isn't what I had known What I thought it would be But I feel so alive with these phantoms of night And I know that this life isn't safe But it's wild and it's free All that I wanted So Cats was adapted into a 2019 fantasy musical film that was based on the stage show of the same name. It was directed by Tom Hooper in his second feature musical following Les Miserables from a screenplay by Lee Hall and Hooper and features an ensemble cast including James Corden, Judi Dench, Jason Derulo, Idris Elba, Jennifer Hudson, Ian McKellen, Taylor Swift, Rebel Wilson, and Francesca Hayward. Cats was theatrically released in the United Kingdom and the United States on December 20th, 2019 by Universal Pictures. The film received overwhelmingly negative reviews from critics who criticized the CGI effects, plot, and tone, with many calling it one of the worst films of 2019. The film was also a box office bomb, grossing $57 million on a $90 million budget. Andrew, we both saw the Cats movie. I want you to tell us... Because the patrons know about it, but tell us about your experience going to see the Cats movie. All right. Um, well, Cats was released, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of hype about it, of course, and everybody mostly was from talking. us. And uh, well, I didn't see it until a few a few days later. I think maybe even a full week. Uh, no, it was four a, days afterwards. Four days after it's released, you went to see it. It was a beautiful Christmas Eve. And all by myself, I uh, <laughs> drove into the wonderful town of Saratoga Springs, walked into the movie theater, and asked the uh, asked the man at the counter if there was any seats left for cats at uh, <laughs> one o'clock in the afternoon on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve, and he said, "Why, yes, there is." And I said, "How unfortunate!" And I went and watched it. <laughs> How many other people were in the theater with you? Uh, five. Three of them left. <laughs> So by the end, it was just you and two other people. Yes, and at the end of the show, I sat there just completely out of my mind, staring at the credits, and the two people that stayed in the theater were like, that was pretty good. Were they really? Oh my yes. god. <laughs> oh my god. Did I mention that the other three people were like a grandmother and two uh, small children? Oh, was it too too terrifying for them? Well, yeah, I'm pretty I mean, this movie, are you sure it was directed by Tom Hooper and not Toby Hooper because it's pretty fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good reference. Um Andrew, what do you how does this compare to his other film Lame Is, which we also have done recently? I think the singing was a little better. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was very insistent that ever all the singing be live in this movie too. Yeah. Well, could you tell? No. <laughs> oh, I could, especially with Francesca I mean, it, Hayward. It didn't sound like overproduced at the very least. Uh, no, it didn't sound like Annie 2014. No, no, but Annie 2014 makes anything look wonderful. No, the Cats is still worse, but is it though? I think it is. Although Annie 2014 was pretty bad. <laughs> 
Why are there so many bad adaptations of musicals? Because people think they get half-ass musicals because nobody cares because it's not a real form of media. Apparently, people like you before we started this show. I don't think so though, because I I I still appreciated like the older movie style musicals, and I feel like people do still appreciate that stuff. Nobody enjoys anything, Andrew. They leave two star and one star reviews for just a podcast is trying its best. Jess, we deserve those because we fucking suck. <laughs> You're right. Thank you for bringing me back down to life. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Just describe for me. Like, let me tell you about my experience seeing it. Yeah. What so I, What is your experience watching this? You saw it opening night, and then you watched it again for some reason. Yes, I saw it the opening night, like the midnight of my birthday, because I it opened on the twentieth, and I birthday is on the twenty first. So I brought in the age of twenty four by watching Cats. Beautiful. Um, how many people were there opening night? I'm curious. Opening night, it was like it was like ten people in there, and five people walked out. Oh my god, five people walked out. Yes, it was a group of younger African American people, and they were like so excited because they were really excited for Idris Elba and Jennifer Hudson, and they were just talking about it. And I was like, ooh, they don't know what they're in for. And they left before either of them had had a real good scene on screen. I'm curious, when did they leave? Like, what song? <laughs> they left right after Jenny Annie Dot song. Oh, well, I mean, that's a good time to leave. I mean, you have the, uh, you have the terrifying mice and the, uh, and the cockroaches, right? It was right when James Corden came on screen, in fact. <laughs> right when James Corden came on screen. <laughs> they left. For, uh, for his Bustopher Jones number. Yes, I saw them start to get on their coats and I was like, poor souls couldn't make it. So, yeah, and my <laughs> girlfriend who went with me said she fell asleep out of spite just because she was so angry at it and threatened to punch her cat afterwards because she was just so mad at the animal of cats. And I was like, and I was buzzed because it was my birthday and I drank a lot before going to see cats because you do. And I was like, I think I was too drunk to properly understand that movie. I'm not going to lie. So I went to go see it again. <laughs> and I brought my <laughs> of course bro- you did. My brother and his friends who, much like you, did not you like forced musicals. people to watch this? I did. <laughs> I Why did. Why did you do that? And that one had a couple people in it. There was like a group of three women behind us, older women, and a group of like a couple girls in the front. And on my right, there was a guy and his wife. And I was like, oh, I wonder who dragged who. But then when Jennifer Hudson is saying the touch me, he just stood up and started applauding. And I was like, oh, he dragged her. Oh, no. He stood up and he applauded. Yes, this was a thing that happened. We all looked very baffled. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I, okay, so when I first started watching the movie, <laughs> yeah. like, my first, like, the second one of the cats showed up in, like, that whole first number where it's just, like, more and more cats are appearing, my, I think my jaw was just, like, stuck open. I have never seen something so ugly on a movie screen before you know i'm gonna be the guy that says the effect isn't that bad you really don't think so no it wasn't that bad i i completely disagree i think it was actually really really ugly well (laughs) given the context that this film was put into production in april and they only had from (laughs) april to today to make the movie Okay, well, I don't care about the context. I'm talking I'm saying about the what VFX I saw workers on the screen. Did the best <laughs> they could with that situation. You know what they should have done, though, instead of what they did? Not make the movie. <laughs> that, but if they have to make the movie, just use costumes. You know, like the musical did. What's wrong with using costumes? Because then you couldn't be nominated for the best VFX Oscar, Andrew. God, digital fur technology. Get with the times. Okay, well, you weren't going to get nominated for that anyway because you just made Cats 2019. So <laughs> you're not getting nominated for anything. <laughs> the thing is, they they were really pushing the win Oscars. Like, Jennifer Hudson thought she was in Les Mis. She thought she was in a movie. Yeah, well... I think the reason they thought that is because the musical is so popular and so widely known that they were like, it can't possibly go wrong. I mean, this is like fail. This is like big theater stuff. People love this. It's really artsy. All the all the smart people will go out to see this. The director won a best director Oscar and best picture before. Oh, all the cards are lined up right. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, though, you you made something that is on the same tier as a uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, <laughs> except Sonic had the due diligence to change itself. Uh, and uh, nobody cares about cats anymore because it's not the eighties anymore. Uh, remember when Steven Spielberg was supposed to make an animated version in like the nineties and like the American Tale style? Remember how almost watchable that could have been? Uh, honestly, an animated version of this would be interesting. Especially if, like, Steven Spielberg, one of the most, like, I wouldn't say best, but, like, one of the most easily marketed directors of all time behind it. Hell, just get him to produce it, and he'll put his name on it as if he directed it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exa well, Steven Spielberg had to have been, had some involvement, because one of the title cards at the beginning is Amblin, which is his production company. Really? Yeah, that, well, that was, was smart another surprise. Not, he was smart enough to not put his name on it. Or to at least not do interviews about it. He just saw, he just saw that same trailer we all saw and was like, I am not getting involved in this at all. <laughs> hmm, not going to touch that one with a 50 foot, foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and next year he's releasing his musical version of West Side Story. He didn't want to taint that with the cats. There's actually a lot of musical movies coming out, and I I think the bad thing about that is that um I mean if you're if they're all gonna be this bad, it's we're... <laughs> Andrew. I don't think a film could ever be this bad again. Okay, do you think this is actually one of the worst major releases of all time? I think this is one of the worst films that tried to have a best picture or like prestige release of all time let me put it that way it might be the worst yeah because they went they went for that like christmas uh time uh release which that's usually like the oscar bait type but stuff. they also had it on its for universal pictures for your consideration page until after it got released and they took it down <laughs> They, it was probably just embarrassing to have it up there because it was such a flop and honestly was just not good. I mean, why would anyone expect this to be good? What? I'm ima trying to imagine the producer, the head of Universal, that saw a rough cut of this and was like, you know, this this might work. Okay, something else about the, the, uh, the movie specifically. Uh, obviously, the effects are atrocious and, and whatever, and, it, and it's cats. Um, but what about the humor? Why did they add, like weird bizarre jokes in to this movie because why else do you hire james corden and rebel wilson maybe that wasn't a good idea who would you put in there i mean jack black that could work actually jack black probably would have worked i mean just put anybody with that body type and honestly the the people they casted would have worked just don't have them do stupid jokes <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, what is the worst part of this movie to you? Is it the cockroaches? Uh, is it the mice? Okay, the mice is one of the worst. Honestly, I didn't <laughs> mind the cockroaches as much. I thought the mice were a little more freaky. Because um, the mice are like children? It's bizarre. Yeah. Um, I think the part where James Corden starts like talking to the guy who jumped down onto the, his little thing to fling him up in the air. Yeah. The seesaw. Yeah, that was that bad. Part's, that part's really bad. Like, that part is, like, every level of uncomfortable. It's, like, person telling a joke that isn't funny for way too long. Also, horrific CGI on screen doing that. And just just everything about it is just like, this is really uncomfortable. You want to and... know how to make yourself <laughs> just as uncomfortable as that with the bad humor that's going on too long and terrible animation? Just turn on Food Fight, put it on mute, and then turn on an episode of Musicals with Cheese. And there you've got it. You've just watched you... Cats. <laughs> <laughs> What is more uncomfortable, watching the scene with Buster for Jones trying to make a joke in the Cats movie, or your mother walking in while you're jerking off? <laughs> well, when my mom walks in, I just keep carrying the conversation. I don't stop. <laughs> well, I mean, neither did Buster for Jones. No, the entire movie stopped because they had to do that awkward bit. I mean, but if my mom comes in, I just keep plowing away. She can't stop me. That's true. That's fair. All right. Uh, what song was butchered the most? I don't think any of them were butchered because Andrew Lloyd Webber. Here's here's the big thing with Andrew Lloyd Webber. He is very keen on nobody fucking with his musicals, if that makes sense. Well, when I drop the ball here. <laughs> when I say that, you will agree with me in this. This is a very accurate representation of the Cats Broadway show. I actually agree. And I think that's the one thing I tweeted out uh, about this after I saw it. Yes. But that's because Andrew Lloyd Webber won't let anyone mess with the music. They, he won't let any cuts. And 
you've seen Sondheim's adaptations to film. You watched Into the Woods and Sweeney Todd, and there are some big cuts in it. And yes. for Sweeney Todd, a lot of it is for the better for a movie. Yeah, actually, I would say that Cats, um, on top of being uncomfortable, is too long as well. <laughs> yes, because they didn't cut anything, because I feel like producer Andrew Lloyd Webber wouldn't have let them. I can agree with that. And that is part of why this doesn't work, and probably a main reason why Spielberg was never able to make his animated version. Because it just would have been too fucking long. <laughs> and look at the Phantom of the Opera movie. Um, Not a single cut there. It still doesn't work, but he won't. he's in love with himself so much that he won't let a single... Note, word, or syllable be removed of his precious godly music. Savior of writing. Savior of writing. My balls. But that is conjecture. So we don't know if that's true for certain, but that seems like a plausible That seems like a plausible explanation of why nothing got cut from the Cats movie except for Growl Tiger's greatest feat. Yeah. Growl Tiger's yeah. last stand. Who in the movie is a real character, wherein in the musical was just a... Uh, persona that gus the theater cat put on and said i played him once yeah that's weird i didn't like that <laughs> mm. can i be positive for a moment you're glad that they cut the rumpus cat no they should have <laughs> kept the rumpus cat <laughs> no one is talking about how important it was that they keep the rumpus cat they cut him <laughs> uh, the awful battle of pecs and pollicles nobody <sighs> That is not a part of the cat's dialogue. But no. One of the positive things I want to say is the choreography by Andy Blankenbuehler is really good. The dancing altogether is really well performed. It's just made worse by the way it was shot and the way that... Yeah, I was going to say the dancing is hard to see a lot of times because they cut away from it a lot. Yes. Yes. The editing is terrible and the way it is shot is even worse. Um, yeah. No, I mean, overall, uh, I can't possibly recommend anyone watch the Cats movie. Like, even out of curiosity, I think, I mean, curiosity killed the cats, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> fuck you, God damn it! Don't watch Cats at all, I, ever. I disagree, movie... I say watch it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the movie's a lot of fun. Okay, watch it if you have a bunch of friends and you're all wasted, um, but don't watch it by yourself on Christmas Eve. Um... Yes, don't watch it by yourself in an empty theater on Christmas Eve. <laughs> that is a very good... Um, but in L.A., they're having a rowdy cat screening where you're supposed to yell and dance and scream during the entire show. And I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, this may become like a... Uh, a cult film. A cult film. Very uh, honestly, like I Rocky can see Horror. that. I think that would be can... the right world for this. Yeah. And you know what? What might be good about that is maybe the Cats musical will become a cult musical as well. And nobody will ever take it seriously again. And this will be Andrew Lloyd Webber's legacy. Making garbage and being made fun of <laughs> until he dies. <laughs> I feel like someday that is going to be his legacy, but yes. People are going to forget every good thing he did. Evita, who cares? Jesus Christ Superstar, down the drain. It's just the Gumby Cat. It's <laughs> and Gumby Cat. Else. It's Gumby Cat in a very colorful coat. <laughs> yep. Forgot about the colorful coat. Yeah, that's it. He just did camp garbage. <laughs> Hi, Jesus. <laughs> Throw it in the trash. Uh uh, I don't Andrew, have what is your overall thoughts cats. on Cats and your cheese rating? My thoughts on Cats the musical is, uh, <laughs> you got I, I don't understand why it's popular, and I don't like it. Um, my thoughts on the movie is, it's really bad. <laughs> and, I, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say. Um, that's, I mean, can cats even eat cheese? I don't think they can. Uh, you know what? Uh, this is gonna, I'm gonna give this cat cheese, which is if you milk a cat and then make cheese out of that. That's what this is. Okay. All right. So, Cats the that's Musical. Disgu is, that's disgusting, by the way. Cats the Musical <laughs> is very, very bad. I've never liked it. I've spoken ill on it as long as I've had any presence on the internet. The Cats movie is a lot of fun. It's so bad, but I loved watching it both times. Very See, hard. but you're saying you're saying it's a lot of fun, but it is because it's terrible that it's fun. Like it is yes. really bad. It is really bad, but it reminds me <laughs> of the room and Rocky Horror in the best ways. Dude, I would say Rocky Horror is like actually good though, whereas this is just straight like bad. It's like you're laughing at it. Whereas Rocky Horror, it's kind of like you're laughing with it because it's camp and it knows it's camp. Whereas this is like actually just trash and it thinks it's good. <laughs> so it's like The Room. Yes, it's more like The Room, I would say. Okay. It is The Room of musical theater and I feel like we needed one of those. I'm not going to lie. So my cheese rating is Fromage de Chat, which is 
cat milk cheese. Oh, there you go. That's what I gave it. <laughs> yeah, but mine's the actual proper name. Um, wow. It, Jess did his research on this episode. Yeah. I'm applauding uh, you, Jess. Um, <laughs> but it's also known as Dynamilk. And do you want to know the worst name they have for it? Oh, no. What is it? The Pussy Milker. Um, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew. Oh, it, it's bad. But do you know what isn't bad? Our patrons? Our wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for making this possible. I'm sorry that we run such a terrible show that there's no no research on two star reviews. So how about you guys even out the playing field by giving us a bunch of five star reviews? Jess, don't beg for reviews. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I don't want, I want, I want love. I need my daddy to know I'm popular. Jess, you get ne- you get enough love. We're getting money from people. That's, that's You're more getting love money than... from people. Let's be fair. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen much of that either. Come on, Jess. <laughs> sure. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher at Musicals with Cheese. We're on Twitter at Cheesy Musicals. Our Patreon is Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is Musicals with Cheese. Our email is musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Um, our title card was created by the incredible Jolene Casco. Andrew, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Meow, 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 Wait, Jess, we never told them what Jellicle means. Oh, yeah, it means... No, we're going into after party. This is after party now. You want to know what Jellicle means? After party. Oh, yeah, yeah. Donate on Patreon and listen to the after party, and I will explain to all y'all where the term Jellicle comes from. As well, we are going to do a BuzzFeed test to figure out which cats me and Andrew are. So, come join us on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> that We're such whores. Alright, we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese.